smarter AutoCAD blocks for civil engineers every day. In this tutorial, we're gonna do a cellular storage block. Now, it is pretty similar to the permeable paving block video that I've done previously, but we have added some extra feature. For example, this M text, which updates automatically the volume. So we won't have to calculate it ourselves. In addition, we have some same parameters as the permeable, which is length, width, area, porosity, depth, and volume. Now I'm going to show you how to create this. And also I'm going to show you how you can make sure you bring it with just a click of a button and you can bring as many storages as you want. Without further ado, let's begin. So we open a fresh new drawing and what we're going to do is draw at 0, 0, a 10 meter, let's say by, let's zoom in a tiny bit, and by 5, let's make it more centered to the screen, 10 and see for close. Oh, I need to enable the command so you can see it at the bottom left. So now you can see middle click, there yeah, we go. Now what we're going to do is also go ahead and add the hatch because we're going to use the hatch as well and what we're going to do is now just make sure the scale is set correctly so 0.1 that's fine but let's find this yeah and let's rotate it by 45 degrees so it looks like a cellular storage yes perfect now uh, also we don't want it to be annotated perfect now what we're going to do is move it so we're just going to enable our snappings, grab the center and move it to zero, zero. Now, the reason we're moving it to zero, zero is when we type the block command and we name it, let's say example storage, and we're going to specify on screen. We just untick that box and keep it at zero, zero and block unit. Let's leave it unitless unless you want to keep it. There is the block unit. What it does is basically if you're drawing units is in meters, it will convert it. So no harm no foul but i do my drawings in unit list and hit ok and there you have it we have a block now right click go to block editor and what we're gonna do is edit our block surprise surprise so we're gonna hit the auto constraint button which is in the block editor tab so and then we're gonna hit s for settings and hit enter and we're going to make sure parallel, perpendicular and equal are ticked because these are the parameters, the constraints that we need to create this block. So we select all of them, hit enter. And now you can see that these two lines are parallel, these two are parallel, and then we've got perpendicular here. I don't know where the equal sign went, but since they're parallel, that should work. Now, the next step is to add some linear. In a dimension so in the block editor in the dimensional add the linear with the lock hover over there all the way to there and it will prompt you to put a name let's give it length the reason we're doing that is so it can pop up in our parameters window and we can read it easily then linear we're gonna do from top to bottom the reason we're doing that is because we don't want the arrows to clash so basically the drag arrow and we're gonna do width now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the parameters manager we're gonna bring our window over here and what we're gonna do is create some more parameters so area which is the length times the width times is the asterisk i'm not sure if the caps count but make sure you type everything correctly and then we have the porosity which is let's set it at 0 0.95 so it's preset and then we have the depth which let's set at one and then we have the volume which is the depth times the porosity times the area now we do not have to do anything else here and we're just gonna close the block editor and hit save changes now if we select our block you can see here we have the length width area porosity depth and the volume calculated and if we drag and drop you can see the volume changes now, what we're going to do now is go and create an M text. And what we're going to do is let's put it a tiny bit over and let's type S. And then what I'm going to do is just change the text height. 0.5 usually is fine. And I'm just going to do it one meter away. Now, I'm just going to type cellular storage or number one, for example. And then what I'm going to do is type area, um, no, depth, I need the depth and the volume. That's where I usually show my drawings. Now, all you can do is right click 
go to insert field or control F. And what we're going to do is at field category, we're going to select objects and then we're going to select object and then we're going to hit the select object and we're going to select our block. And when we select the block, the properties, it will appear the parameters that we've defined. So now we need the depth. So we're going to go to D depth. And what we're going to do, we can do is change the current precision. We want it, let's say, two decimals, additional format. Let's say we want a suffix of M. Hit OK and OK. And the volume, we do the same thing. Insert field, object, select it, and then we go to volume. And then we change the precision. Let's say, mm, I don't know. Let's keep it one decimal. Additional formatting. We don't need any additional one because the reason is the we don't we can have the subscript. I think it's called. Is it called subscript? Yeah, so superscript. So we do it like this, and all we have to do is just add some background to it. So yes, let's say 1.25. I think it works really fine with the text frame. And then just bring your text frame tiny bit in and there you have it so now if we change this and hit the region it updates and if we change let's say select the block and change the depth let's say to two it will up upload upload it will update the depth and the volume also now how do we create the button that brings the storage so basically if we go to our drainage tool palette storage and we can bring it like that. So we won't have to create every time we're opening new drawing and copy paste. We don't want that hassle. We want our life easy. So all we have to do is just type CUI for custom user interface. So once you load uh, the CUI screen loads, mine takes time of time. I'm just gonna go to my CUI file. If you want, you can create one by going to the transfer tab and hitting this new button create a new customization file but i already have created a custom user interface so then what you will do is go to ribbon and then panels and then you want to move your panel in the tabs so i've made a whole tutorial about this so just go ahead and watch it and what we're going to do is hit the asterisk to create a new command but i've created the command for you guys so let's see uh, let's type storage and we'll find it so when you create the new command it will ask you a few things so it will ask us for example for a name uh, the icon file which you can change it to whatever you like and then you want the macro key now the macro key what i've done is basically it's a list of commands that you type in your command line in autocad and will follow them that's what all the macro does cc is for cancel and then we're typing the insert command and then we're telling it what to insert now this is the file that i saved the storage file at so basically, you have to save the DWG file of your block somewhere where your AutoCAD has a search file path to. Now, if you're new to all this, I would suggest to watch my how to create a custom user interface tutorial. Then this button is for enter and then the slash is for the user input. So basically it waits for us to, to tell it which position it is. Then it hits enter for the scale and enter for the rotation and enter i think for the because it will come as blocked so basically it's already a block and then it will block the text with the block which we don't want that and we tell autocad explode it and then explode the last block that we brought and then purge it just so we can clear it from our uh, insert let's say memory and then uh, we tell it which one to purge the block cds cellular storage which is the one that it brought in our block could have a different name it's a whole thing but once you grasp it it's super easy so i will leave this command line below and i'll leave in brackets here where you need to put your file name now the other thing that you need to be careful is as i said is to make sure that if you go to your options in your files support file search path you need to allow for it for example see i've allowed projects cts autocad slash blocks that's the folder where it browses and finds all the blocks so I hope you find this tutorial useful and you can use this so you can make your life easier because that's the whole point of the dynamic blocks is to make our life easier. Now, if you liked the video, hit the like button. And if you loved it, hit the subscribe button and share it with your colleagues so they can create the attenuation block and they can send it to you. Or you can actually download it from the link in the description below. 
Other than that, stay safe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.